I just want your viewers you. to know that I am in receipt of a letter that was written by a staff member of the ministry to the Irfan Ali. And for just to show your, your viewers, let me show them the evidence. As they can see there, there's a date there. The date there, I, I trust that they're seeing it. It's uh, 2021, the third month, the 12th day. And it's addressed mm -hmm. to Dr. Irfan Ali, President of the Cooperative republic of guyana office of the president and if you see the subject it says for urgent intervention for the well-being of staff at ministry of local government and regional development and the content is Ministry's very rest. very heavy so i am going to take the opportunity of reading it so that your viewers can know what is it that is happening at the ministry of local government and regional development it says and i quote Dear Mr. President, greetings to you and your good office. Assalamu alaikum. The ministry has become a dark place under the leadership of the current permanent secretary, Ms. Prema Rupnarain. As a senior staff who has been at the ministry for over 10 years and have worked on the previous permanent secretaries, including the Honorable Dharam Lal, Colin Kroll, and most recent, Emil Magarel, this is the worst I have seen. It is said a stitch in time saves nine. With that in mind, I am writing for urgent intervention in the issues affecting staff at the local government ministry. I am not sure if the subject minister is aware of these issues, but I don't have much confidence in him since we had a previous confrontation. Ms. Rupnarain has displayed partiality and reduced the staff to place of insignificance. For the short time Ms. Rupnarain took office, the environment is one that has no warmth or camaraderie unless you are politically aligned or connected to the PS herself. Staff only come to work because they have to. She has managed to forge a wedge of divisiveness in the public service environment. Here are just a few of our evils, for want of a better word. One, since Ms. Rupnarain took office, at least four black staff who were on contract have lost their job, and they are not political appointees. Two drivers are awaiting the end of their contract. A typist clerk attached to the registry who is a single mother of two and a young black man that was attached to the PS secretariat. Note this young man went and examined and explained his plight to the PS as a father for three children. She promised him that she will do her best and her best was not to renew his contract, leaving a wife and three children on the breadline. Two, she has made her secretariat an all Indian. There's a black girl attached to her secretariat. She has ensured that young lady has no place but put her in a corner in the ministry. The seat where that young lady should be sitting is the PS secretariat is now a seat for her driver or office assistant whenever they are available. Three, the office assistant attached to her secretariat is not allowed to lift things like other office assistants. No one can give her directives except it comes from her office. While the others who are black young men are worked like slaves, in, it's a modern day slave camp at the ministry. Four, she denied that young black girl attached to her secretariat her duty free. Kindly note, Mr. President, that all the present political appointees who came on after the government took office and holds the same position as that young lady were granted duty free at request. This young woman has traveled throughout Guyana working for the ministry and the PS denied her because she's black and have no affiliation to the PS political party. 
What a shame. Yet on the month where women are celebrated, she posed gleamingly, challenging the oppression of women of which she's chief. Five, the PS has formulated a social committee to plan activities for the ministry, of which 98% are of East Indian descent and Hindus like her. The DPS is the only black person on board. This same committee full of Hindus have to plan for Christian and Muslims events of which none is represented. These evils do not, do, are not oversights, but clear deliberate oppression and abuse of power. Six, the PS has made it her duty to undermine the authority of a senior admin officer. This woman has many years of service. One of the most competent, when the assistant secretary general went on leave and that senior officer was next in line to act in that capacity, the PS placed a young Indian girl with no experience to function in that position. Mr. President, that young lady is a novice, had no idea what to do but the PS quest to oppress another black person. She preferred to work with mediocrity. I don't believe this is not your vision as president to oppress anyone, but you, the people, you placed in critical office is a reflection of your office. When there's an event at the ministry, the PS secretary and her cohorts are paid to provide meals. Like last December, and all of these staff are East Indians. There's a clear disregard for the blacks. Pepper Pot was ordered from the PS secretary's mother. Why black staff members are not given the same privilege? Finally, she dismantled the procurement department, took the black procurement manager and placed him under an East Indian young man who is an engineer. The procurement department is now under engineering and the procurement manager is a rubber stamp. Our Camp Street branch is the dumping ground for staff. Once the management don't want you and you're, and you're not on contract where they dismiss you easily, they post you to Camp Street. The only persons treated with respect at the Camp Street branch are the staff who are politically aligned to the government party. All others are treated as second class citizens. This is modern slavery and staff go to work because they need a job. I therefore call upon your good office to address these issues speedily. Mr. President, let those drivers retain their jobs. There are Indian drivers older than these two black drivers that are known PPP that are still on the job. Why do black men have to be unemployed and have families? How many more? How many more must carry this load? Please look into the plight of this young black woman. She see so her duty free can be granted. Sir, and that admin officer that is treated with scorn because she normally stands up to injustice and for what is right, let the procurement manager be allowed to function. Let all office assistants be treated equally. Reinstate that single parent black girl from the registry department so she can provide for her children. As these evils continue, many staff come to work in fear, wondering who is next. There are many issues, but as I raise these few, I hope there will be no reason to raise others. Mr. President, when you were sworn in, your mother in her interview said, you will do Guyanese well. You're an honest, fair, and compassionate person. I call upon those qualities inside of you to come to the fore and urgently address Ms. Rupnarain's despotism at the Ministry of Local Government. I do hope and pray that the staff members whose issues I raised in this letter will not be penalized for my actions. 
Let me apologize to them in advance should they be made to go through any form of additional punishment added to what they are already enduring. Mr. President, you're already you have already received one letter from senior members of staff. I wish to add mine. Kindly note that this letter will be sent to the print media and or publication because these serious issues of des despotic leadership of the PS requires prompt action. Public servants are people too, especially those who are not politically aligned and need their jobs to take care of their families. Mr. President, it is my plea that you don't allow those under your charge to mar your tenure of leadership with brutishness and maltreatment of public servants. You're the father of this nation, and I hope and trust you be a father of all, regardless of race or political affiliation. I beseech to ensure all is treated equally in the public service, for injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. Martin Luther King Jr. said, evil prevails because good men stay silent. I refuse to remain silent as a senior staff. Though I'm not affected, my conscience won't let me go. This is a cry for help, 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 urgent help. Yours respectfully, concerned senior staff member. CC, Vice President Bar Jagdio, Honorable Joseph Hamilton, Minister of Labor, Honorable Joseph Harmon, Leader of the Opposition, Editor of Kaichor News and Stabrook News, unquote. That is the letter that was written by a concerned staff at the Ministry of Local Government and Regional Development. Mm -hmm.